In our investigating friction lab, we wanted to determine what different things affect the size of the force of friction. To do that, we had six different lab groups perform six different experiments. Uh, the variables in red represent the independent variable for each lab group. So for group A, they varied the size of the force of gravity on an object or the object's weight and measured its effect on the force of friction. Now, in our pre-lab, we identified that it seemed to take more force to get something to move or to start to slide than it did to keep something sliding at, con at a constant velocity. And so we kind of split up the two ideas of friction to think about, well, how big is the largest value that friction can be between two surfaces when something's at rest or not sliding? And so, so group A looked at the relationship between the force of gravity and the maximum frictional force that can exist between two surfaces at rest. And they did that, did that specifically for uh, felt material on the bottom of this friction sled in the desk. Group B used the same materials, but they looked at the size of the frictional force that existed between the felt surface and the desk while it was moving, uh, and specifically at a constant velocity. And they found out how changing the object's weight similar to group A affected that. Group C and D did something similar except they used a cork surface on the desk to find out if different materials have different effects on the force of friction. Group E investigated the relationship between surface area and the frictional force and group F investigated whether the speed at which two surfaces were moving with respect to one another affected the size of that frictional force while those two things were sliding. So let's look at some of the results. Uh, here we're looking at the maximum frictional force that exists between two surfaces, specifically cork and a desk surface, uh, while things are at rest. And both groups found out that there's a proportional relationship between the weight of an object or the force of gravity on it and the size of the force of friction. They also found that the force of friction was always smaller than the force of gravity by some coefficient or some percent. This group found that the force of friction, the biggest force that friction could be, was about half of the size of the weight of that object. Another group in their experimental data found that the slope of their line uh, showed that the force of friction was about 66% or two-thirds of the size of force of gravity. The groups that used the same surfaces and investigated the size of the frictional force while the objects were sliding found a similar type of relationship that the force of friction was proportional to the size of the force of gravity, that there was a linear relationship. But they found that when the object was sliding, that the size of the frictional force was less than half of the weight. In this case, it was 0.437 times the, the weight. This group found that it was about 0 0.380 times the weight, which kind of confirms our pre-lab observations that the amount of frictional force between objects when they're sliding or moving is smaller than the biggest force that can exist when two surfaces are not moving or at rest. Group B investigated the same thing that we just looked at. So how big is the frictional force while well, objects are sliding with respect, respect to one another? But here they used a felt surface on the desk and they found that the force of friction was even smaller for the same given amount of weight. They also found a linear relationship. So their slope values were a little about 0.3 or about a third of the weight. So this indicated that the type of material definitely affects how big the frictional force can be. The groups that looked at surface area found that there was a lot, a wide range of values when they were trying to, to measure the size of the frictional force when they changed the surface area. But they more or less found out that there wasn't a significant effect overall as they doubled and tripled and quadrupled the size of the surface area. They both found that there was an independent relationship between the surface area of the object and the size of the frictional force, meaning that surface area doesn't seem to matter. The groups that investigated the relationship between velocity and the force of friction uh, had a little bit harder time interpreting their data. 
but they finally landed on the idea that there's a slight linear relationship between velocity and the force of friction, meaning that the faster objects are moving when they're sliding, there's a little bit larger force of friction that exists between those two surfaces. So here's what we concluded in the very, very end. So even though there is a slight linear dependence on velocity, for the purposes of this class, we're going to assume that no matter what velocity an object is sliding along a surface at, that the speed at which it's moving doesn't matter, that the force of friction is around is about constant. So what that gives us then, this would have been an equation that the groups found when they're investigating the force of friction between surfaces while they're at rest and the force of gravity. They found that the force of friction is equal to 0.5 units of newtons per newton times the force of gravity. And we decided that this value depends on the type of surfaces in contact and whether or not we're talking about the force of friction while at rest or the force of friction while sliding or moving. That slope which is the amount of frictional force for each unit of weight. We said this value depends on the types of surfaces in contact and whether the surfaces are at rest or sliding with respect to one another. In physics, we call that value the coefficient of friction. It's a coefficient because it's unitless. Newtons divided by newtons turns into, they cancel out and just turn into one. So it's 0.5 times the force of gravity. And we use the Greek letter mu as the variable to represent the coefficient of friction. So we can then rewrite this equation for a general equation. We get that the size of the frictional force or the magnitude is equal to some coefficient of friction times the size of the force of gravity. Now this coefficient we said depends on the, the two different materials in contact and whether or not the surfaces are at rest or whether the surfaces are moving with respect to one another. So in physics, we call the friction that exists between two surfaces that are not sliding, or the force of friction between two surfaces when the surfaces are at rest, we call that static friction. And the frictional force that exists between two surfaces that are moving with respect to one another, we call that force kinetic friction. So the new terms in our lab, there's three of them. We have static friction, kinetic friction and the coefficient of friction. So let's go ahead and test our theory of static friction. We know that the force of friction, at least we think we know, the force of friction depends on the size of the force of gravity on the object. So if we take the force of gravity, multiply by the coefficient, we'd get the force of friction. If we have a cork sled uh, and we want to find out the amount of force needed to get it to move, which means we have to pull with as much force as the biggest static frictional force could possibly be. Uh, for a one kilogram object, let's just look at the force of gravity. It's negative 10 newtons. If we finish the force diagram, it's sitting at rest on the desk, means there's got to be a 10 newton, positive 10 newton force up, balancing that out. And if we start to pull to the right with our force sensor, there's going to be a little static frictional force pushing back to the left. If we pull to the right a little bit of force, static friction will push back with a little force. And we can pull harder, static friction will be larger. We know that the force of tension, the force of friction have to be the same size if that cork sled remains at rest. So let's find out how much force does it take to get a cork sled that has a total combined mass of one kilogram moving. So here I'm going to pull on this one kilogram friction sled with a force sensor and measure the size of that force. I'm pulling with an increasing force now about three newtons, so friction must be three newtons. You can see that the harder I pull, the larger static friction is to kind of keep this thing at rest, but static friction only pushed back with so much force. Looks like it peaked out at a little over four newtons, specifically about 4.6 newtons. So it looks like, experimentally, we found out that it took 
about 4.6 newtons at most to get that sled to move which means that's the biggest static frictional force could possibly be and so for a force of gravity of 10 newtons the size of the frictional force was 4.6 newtons which means that it would have a coefficient of static friction of about 0.46 newtons now interestingly that the force of gravity is 10 newtons and the normal force is 10 newtons so I guess we don't really know whether or not the force of gravity is what determines the frictional force or the normal force because they're the same size. So let's look at a situation where the force of gravity is the same yet the normal force is different to find out how that affects the frictional force. If we use some rubber bands to pull up on the sled we know that if the mass is still one kilogram gravity is still, pull still pulling down with 10 newtons and if we pull up on the spring scale with 5 newtons of force then we know the normal force has to get smaller by 5 newtons because there's two upward forces the normal force from the table pushing up the force of tension from the spring or from the rubber bands pulling up as measured by the spring scale those both combined have to balance out the force of gravity so in this situation the force of gravity is still 10 newtons but here we have a normal force that that's about half the size let's find out if the size of the frictional force to get it moving or the biggest force that static friction could be is still the same about 4.6 newtons remember our general equation predicts that if the force of gravity stays the same and the two surfaces stay the same then the force of friction should be the same so while pulling up with 5 newtons on the 10 newton weight it looks like it starts to move right there see where it dips down it looks like the maximum static frictional force is even less than 3 newtons turns out that that max was only about 2.7 newtons so the friction was significantly smaller so what we found out that in this situation the measured maximum static frictional force was only about 2.8 newtons so our general equation has a problem here it said that the frictional force depends only on the two surfaces in contact cork and the desk surface and the size of the gravitational force in both of these situations the two surfaces didn't change they're the same and the force of gravity didn't change yet the frictional force is a little bit more than half of what it was initially so it seems like gravity staying the same didn't mean that the frictional force would stay the same but what did change between these two situations here the normal force was 10 newtons and we had a frictional force of about 4.6 newtons here the normal force is about half the size and the measured maximum static frictional force is also about half the size so it seems like the force of friction is not proportional to the force of gravity on an object it's proportional to the normal force on the object and this is really the amount of force that's actually pushing the two surfaces together so our actual final general equation to be able to predict the size of the frictional force between any two surfaces is given by this equation and this is the equation that's on your AP equation sheet it says that the size of the frictional force is less than or equal to the coefficient of friction times not the force of gravity but times the size or magnitude of the normal force if there's no additional forces and something's just sitting on the table we know that the normal force is the same size as the force of gravity but if there's additional forces pushing down or pulling up at angles or straight up or straight down then the value that really matters is the actual size of the normal force remember that coefficient of friction can change in value based on whether things are at rest or moving so if we have a situation where things are not moving and the two surfaces are at rest we would plug in here the static coefficient of friction and if objects are sliding we would plug in the kinetic coefficient of kinetic friction just to give you a little perspective here's a table of different coefficients of friction between two different materials uh, mu sub s remember is the coefficient of static friction when things are at rest mu sub k is the coefficient of kinetic friction and if we look at this we can see that let's say for tire on concrete so your car tires on the road the coefficient of static friction is one which means that the frictional force that exists is basically equal to the weight of the car 
if the tires are sliding, let's say you slam on your brakes and the wheels lock up, you don't have anti-lock braking systems and the rubber is sliding against the road, then the coefficient of kinetic friction is only 0.8. And so friction then is only 80% of the weight of the vehicle. So remember, static friction is when there, there's a force between two surfaces when they're not at rest. And so if we kind of write this out for static friction, we look, the general equation looks like this, where we use the force of friction while not moving or in a static situation is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the size of the normal force. Now, where did this less than or equal sign come in? In our equations, we said that friction is equal to the coefficient times the normal force. But remember back to the videos that we just saw, when as the tension was increasing, as you pulled a little force, that object didn't move, so that means friction was only a little force pushing back. And as you increase the force pulling, static friction pushed back with a little bit more force. And so static friction is not equal to this value. It's, it's only equal to up to that value. It can be as small as you need it to keep something at rest or only as large as this possible value. So that's why that less than or equal sign is in there. If two surfaces are sliding, that's our kinetic friction scenario, and we get that our general equation kind of looks like this, that the force of friction in a kinetic scenario where things are sliding is equal, equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the size of the normal force. And remember, we are assuming for the purpose of this class and on an AP exam or any other test that it doesn't matter how fast it's sliding, that that force of friction is constant. It's just equal to the coefficient, which depends on the two surfaces, times the size of the normal force.